within five minutes of Tamia being in the house, she was shot. Timothy Batts admits he killed his own daughter. How many shots did you fire? One shot. He says it was a tragic mistake. Prosecutors say it was something else. It was reckless behavior with a, by a convicted felon that shouldn't have had a gun in the first place. The highly charged case against a father and felon. He's no thug, like they tried to portray him to be. Goes before a judge and jury. His trial got underway in a Hendersonville court. This is Tamia coming in. She's wearing the book bag. Just seconds after he fired the gun, hitting his daughter, he rushes to get her help. Very good. Let the record reflect. Jurors were presented two very different pictures of the Tennessee dad, who tearfully took the stand to recount his last conversation with Tamia on their way to the hospital. She was like, Daddy, Daddy, just tell me this a dream. Daddy, tell me it's a dream. And then I was like, you know, I just kept on telling her, I'm sorry to me, I'm sorry. And then she was like, I know. She like, I know it. Now, the defense painted him as a concerned father who fought for custody, who had been victimized himself in a shooting in the past, and he just reacted. Uh, part of that is true. Uh, uh, he did uh, fight for custody, uh, and he did have custody of Tamia and uh, her uh, brothers and sisters. But uh, he also had another side as well, and uh, that side was a, a dark side. District Attorney Ray Whitley is referring to Timothy's criminal past. According to police, he had four arrests and two convictions for drug possession. You know, it, it doesn't take a lot to be a felon in Tennessee. Something defense attorney Joy Kimbrough tried to downplay. Here in Tennessee, if you possess marijuana um, three times, a little marijuana you're going to smoke, the third time is a felony. Was Timothy a criminal? Timothy is a person who in the past had been charged and convicted of a crime. But was he now living in fear because of that criminal past? And I told the jury that uh, he was distracted for some reason. That is Mr. Batts coming in his house. In court, prosecutors used surveillance video as evidence that the father was distracted the day he killed his daughter. Appears to be a silhouette of a pistol right there. And then if he goes forward, as his arm swings to the behind him, you can see the pistol again in his right hand. Prosecutors say it was the gun used to kill Tamia. He came home and he was walking around uh, in the house with a cell phone up to his left ear and a loaded gun. And the gun was loaded with 22 rounds of ammunition. Uh, once looking over his shoulder, it's almost like he was expecting somebody to be following Come and get him. him. Coming to get him inside the home. People were led to believe he was walking around the house talking on the phone with a gun. That's what it sounds like. But that's not what happened. The defense claimed the gun belonged to Timothy's cousin, who had left it at his house just two days earlier. The cousin had been drinking, and he did not want to leave in his car with a gun. So he asked Timothy if he mind keeping the gun, or could he leave it at the house? But he knew he wasn't supposed to have a pistol with him. Well, he wasn't supposed to have a pistol. Right, but he did. But this was just a circumstance. This wasn't an ordinary thing. This isn't something that happens all the time. This is what the defense claims that surveillance video shows. When he left home, he took the gun with him so no one could get to the gun. He actually thought that would be a, a safe thing to safer do. Safer thing to do than right. keep the gun in the house. Exactly. And when he comes back in, he's just going straight to his room. He's not walking around with the gun. He's not talking and swinging the gun. Other evidence presented by the prosecution included large amounts of cash found in Bat's home. It is totally irrelevant. Efforts by the defense to suppress the evidence were unsuccessful. It is to inflame the jury, it is to make the jury think. They're trying to backdoor in, oh, he's a drug dealer. They already know about a felony conviction for drugs. But prosecutors argued the cash showed Bat's state of mind the day he shot and killed Tamia. These are all factors that would show that Mr. Batch was distracted to the point that he shot his daughter uh, recklessly. The father hung his head and cried when prosecutors showed jurors the bloody clothes that had to be cut off his daughter. An apparent bullet hole here at the top of this blood. The defense called Timothy Batts to the stand, and he told the court in his own words how he mistakenly shot his daughter. At the edge of the door, she jumped out from the side of the wall and say, wow, and you know, as if to scare me. And 
the gun was in my hand and it just went off. And I realized it was Tamil. I'm like, Tamil, please tell me you're not here. His lawyer said he had reason to be extra cautious that day. She showed jurors six bullet wounds he got from a shooting six years earlier. During closing arguments, the defense said Bats was simply a father who made a terrible mistake and panicked. He's no thug like they tried to portray him to be. He is a human being with four little children, one that died, three little children now. He is a man that's been beat up all enough. He is a man that's taken six shots in the back and in the back of his head. He's been beat up on enough. I ask that you find him not guilty. <coughs> while prosecutors zeroed in on the reckless homicide charge. The defendant, Timothy Batts, fired without looking. That's why all of us are here today. And to me, a Batts is not. After nine hours of deliberations, jurors found Timothy Batts not guilty of tampering with evidence, guilty of being a felon in possession of a firearm, but were deadlocked on the charge of reckless homicide. Juror number one, I assume that you are hung on count one, is that correct? Yes, sir. Just one kept prosecutors from winning a conviction. Did the foreman say why this one juror held out? She just did, she was not gonna vote guilty. Rather than retry Bats, a plea bargain was reached. We uh, agreed that whatever, if he were to plead guilty to, as charged to reckless homicide, that we would recommend to the judge that that charge would run concurrently at the same time with the uh, felon in possession of a firearm charge. With time already served, he could be granted parole in a matter of months. Was justice served in this case? It was. It, it definitely was because he has been held accountable. He did plead guilty to reckless homicide. He is serving uh, four years. Was the sentence just in this case? Not to me, not to Timothy, what not to his kids, what not should, to his mother. Should he have custody of his other children when he gets out of prison? He made one horrible, horrible mistake. Uh, he has had a history of uh, being involved with drugs but uh, that's certainly uh, not any business of mine at, at this point. Surely he's learned a, a, a lesson. Well, bye YouTube. Hope you love my video. Since Bat's prison sentences were ordered to be served concurrently, he'll be eligible for parole in the fall of next year. Now we want to hear from you. Do you think Timothy Bats got off too easy or was justice served? Sound off right now on our Facebook page. I'm Chris Hansen. If you like this story, make sure you tune in every day to Crime Watch Daily. You can find where the show airs in your city at CrimeWatchDaily.com. Watch it live or record it on your DVR and watch it at night. And to all those criminals out there, remember, we are watching.